bien. I want you all to take a big deep breath with me. Go ahead and take a deep inhale and exhale. And now take another one in rhythm with this cactus coral that is native to Miami. This video was created by Coral Morphologic, a multifaceted platform for the development of symbiosis between humans and coral. The ocean provides every second breath we take. She covers over 70% of our planet absorbs 31% of excess carbon dioxide emissions released into the atmosphere, and much more of excess heat. She regulates our climate, circulates global heat and cooling currents to help global temperature, provides a food source to over 3 billion people, a primary source of livelihood and sustenance to millions more. And she's the reason why we're all alive. Yet, the ocean is facing all sorts of threats, from plastic pollution on global scales entering the ocean from rivers and streams, to illegal fishing, to the threat of deep sea bed mining, and much more. We're poisoning the very own lifeblood that we depend on for our survival. We can't let this continue. In fact, the opportunity to reverse and restore our ocean falls on my generation, Gen Z, young people, and we have to learn and work with our intergenerational, interspecies and intergovernmental partners in order to reverse the climate crisis and ensure that the ocean is the key player in mitigating the worst of the climate crisis because she holds some of the true powers alongside our indigenous leaders from Tahitian culture, from native Hawaiian culture, and from cultures around the Pacific to cure our dying oceans. Coral polyps from the Pacific are said to be the origin of all life. In fact, all of us here came from the ocean 565 million years ago. We evolved from little bacteria, then became these photosynthesizing phytoplankton, and evolved into modern-day humans. And these coral polyps right here form coral colonies, which form coral reefs that host over 25% of marine biodiversity. Yes, I'm choking up because I love them so much, and because they provide the basis of coastal defense, of fisheries, of livelihoods and sustenance for millions of coastal peoples. And since I was four years old, I've loved coral reefs. When my dad took me snorkeling in the Gili Islands of Indonesia, I soon fell in love with the coral and realized that I wanted to protect the ocean. Growing up in the Middle East, in Indonesia, across North America, splashing in the tide pools as a little kid, I knew that the ocean would be a central part of my life, and there was no other career I envisioned than working as an ocean guardian. I'm proud to say I made that dream come true, and my four-year-old self would be really stoked to, of where I am today. Now I work with the United Nations on the highest level of multilateral governance to advance ocean policy, finance, and justice. And I work with the smallest coastal communities across the Philippines, Hawaii, and other coastal areas that are threatened by climate change, ocean acidification, which leads to coral bleaching, and even lethal humidity every single day. However, this journey wasn't all sunshine and rainbows and it came from a place of deep darkness that I had to overcome. Like many young people in the world who experience eco-anxiety and climate anxiety, I too felt the burdening pressure, the weight of the world that all the other generations said that we have to be the ones to fix this crisis that we're in. However, I knew as a kid that humans don't have to be parasites on the earth. We can actually be symbionts, just like the corals are. And so, after going through feeling like a really small, dark box, not knowing where I belonged or what my purpose on the earth is, like many other young people out there right now, I realized that I could find my purpose and I could find the light at the end of a dark tunnel. So, with the support of my mom and the learnings and teachings of the oceans, I realized that I could have a strong body, calm mind, and vibrant spirit. And so in eighth grade, after graduating from the Young Entrepreneurs Academy, I founded Inner Light, an organization meant to build resilience from the inside out so that young people, my generation, could have the tools they need to build ocean and climate solutions and reach powers 
power positions of leadership within the blue economy. I'm really excited because the ocean was the living being, the entity, the greatest healer. These southern resident killer whales here that are near and dear to my heart, there are only 74 left in existence, have been teachers. And every single time I'm by the coast or by the water, I've learned a very important lesson. The ocean has taught me humility. The ocean has taught me that ocean health is human health and we're fundamentally interconnected. And the ocean has taught me that every breath matters. Learning from the ocean and all of her beautiful creatures has taught me the importance of building community. Just like biodiverse communities in the ocean function at a healthier level, biodiverse and diverse communities on land do the same. And that's why, after graduating from high school, I co-created an Ocean Uprise, an organization that just started with three people, myself, my mentor, and my basically work mom. And after building Ocean Uprise in the last four years, we've grown in a community of three to over 5,000 young ocean leaders in 52 countries. Now we have over 200 alumni that have graduated from an internship program I created as a high school graduate, not knowing where to get started in ocean conservation. Our organization now works with hundreds of other youth-led organizations and intergovernmental agencies, businesses, and NGOs across planet Earth, focusing on strengthening ocean super collaboration, the idea that we're all having to work together to protect our shared ocean home. And everyone can get involved in Ocean Uprise. In fact, we've created free ocean literacy and educational materials that we share around the world because every young person deserves education and access to a healthy ocean and the skills to know how to build one. So I got the awesome opportunity to do just this and bring my skills in community building to the White House and to the international stage. And at COP28, the Conference of the Parties, I got to interview the chair on the Council of Environmental Quality, Brenda Mallory, who's the first African-American in her position of leadership in the White House. I realized that ocean justice is an essential and critical component to address the future of ocean conservation. Ocean justice refers to enacting environmental justice principles as it relates to the use of the ocean for economic, spiritual, cultural, and food provisions, along with much more. Doesn't every kid deserve to grow up and fall in love with the ocean? Doesn't every single young person and adult, we're intergenerational, y'all, we're all working together, deserve to access a clean and safe environment? Ocean justice is just this, and because over 40% of the nation's population lives on the coast, we need to focus on upskilling and training coastal community members and young people in coastal communities and inland communities to be a part of the blue economy workforce. Building a sustainable ocean economy is critical to our shared future. The ocean economy is projected to be $3 trillion by 2030 and employ over 40 million people. Young people who represent 27% of the workforce in OECD countries and over 30% of global population are not included in the blue economy workforce as of today to the extent that we need to be. How is this the case? In an economy that's growing so fast that depends on young people as a labor force, shouldn't we be training the next generation of ocean tech innovators, the next generation of ocean policymakers, and the next generation of coastal heroes with the blue skills that they need to build the blue economy? The answer is yes. And that's exactly what we've been doing, advocating around the world with my friends, a squad of ocean justice heroes. We've been advocating for the protection of the high seas and the high seas treaty, a treaty saying we need to protect areas of biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, over 70% of our planet. We've been advocating for a strong global plastics treaty, saying we need an end to plastics and an end to virgin plastics and turning off the tap to fossil fuels because the fossil fuel era is over. And most importantly, we've been advocating to protect the seafloor, which is a common heritage site of humankind. No ocean, no climate, no life. Just like coral reefs and just like our ancestors on the reefs and the beautiful fish who we call our friends and peers, our generation is required to be resilient. Corals must adapt or die, and in warming, more acidic ocean conditions, corals only have one opportunity to do this. However, there is hope, and it lies in resilience, and resilience lies in intergenerational collaboration. And the ways in which we can enact intergenerational collaboration are threefold. One, building 360-degree mentorship pathways, young people as mentors and mentees. 
Two, having paid internships. Young people receiving paid internships so that we can be upskilled in the blue economy, so that we can be forces for coastal restoration, regeneration, and the future health of our planet. And most importantly, so we can reach the highest levels of power on advisory and executive boards across all companies in the world, because everyone is a part of investing in a healthy planet, because that's a part of everyone's market share. We need to fundamentally understand that corals can teach us how to build a more regenerative future. Corals are the first city builders. Coral reefs are the first real estate developers on planet Earth. And coral reefs has taught us that the power of a movement lies in its diversity. We can learn from coral reefs to become more resilient, to become more adaptable, and most importantly, to become more love-based because the ocean is the beating blue heart of humanity. This coral polyp allows us a portal into our future, and we need to fundamentally understand that nature is the original antidepressant. Nature is the way that young people all around the world connected and generations past, our indigenous stewards, connected with each other through community. Nature and the ocean and these beautiful coral polyps that form our reefs are the reasons why we exist today. So paying tribute and respecting indigenous stewardship and rights means respecting the rights of the ocean, the rights of whales, the rights of corals, and the rights of young people to live in a regenerative world. At the end of the day, it's all one team. We know that ocean health is human health, and we know that we're all here on this planet for a mission. Seven in 10 young people feel eco-anxiety. Let's channel this sense of apathy, this sense of anxiety that young people face into a sense of empowerment, into a stewardship lens that everyone can be a part of building a healthy and regenerative blue economy. I want you all now to stand up and raise your hearts for the ocean because we know that we need to lead with love fundamentally if we're gonna create a regenerative future. The ocean is our eldest ancestor, and the only way we can truly protect her at scale is when we lead from here and here. As my mom says, and the matriarchal lineages of the ocean, we need to take an elevator from our head to our heart, and that's where the power of the ocean can bring us. Thank you, and remember that the ocean is life, and Gen Z is the future of the blue economy.